Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. So on Saturday, news came out that there was going to be this special birthday commemoration and broadcast that celebrates President Nelson's 100th birthday. And I first heard about this from Mindy with Temples of Jesus channel. Make sure to subscribe to her. I'll put a link for her channel in the description box below. And uh, I prepared this video that I'm making right now on Saturday, but I ran out of time because we had stuff that we had to do. And so I did a live stream just covering the basics, but I feel like there's more to explore with this. Um, I want to talk about some really interesting posts on social media from members of the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve that really leave me with the impression that something's about to change or something big is happening. I really think so. And then I want to talk about the numbers associated with President Nelson. Uh, and there's a lot. 7, 40, 99, 100. And uh, I want to do kind of re kind of a review on that. So let's go ahead and let's read this article. President Russell M. Nelson, 100th birthday commemoration announced. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints welcomes all to view a special birthday broadcast in honor of Church President Russell M. Nelson on Monday, September 9th, 2024, his 100th birthday, at 4 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Okay, now just really quick, uh, this is going to probably, we talked about this in the live stream, this is probably going to make national and world news. You know, it's an unusual thing. It's a first for our church having a president of the church that's that's made it to 100 years old. So I wouldn't be surprised if like BBC or The Guardian or uh, some news company like that ran an article just mentioning the fact that our church, uh, our church's president has reached 100 years old. So there's a lot of potential for this to reach a wide audience, right? All right, continuing. On June 1st, President Nelson invited people to commemorate his 100th birthday by reaching out to the one. Now, with that post, um, it's interesting because we've been watching President Nelson's posts uh, for a few different reasons. One, I went, I've, I did a video series where I went through all of, of all of his social media posts, and I'm glad that I did because there were some gems that you can only find in some of his posts. Uh, that he hasn't included in talks that I know of. Um, but secondly, we've noticed this really interesting thing where he's like doing this thing with sevens. And it seems to have started really in September of last year, where on September 21st, which was the, the 200th anniversary of the Angel Moroni meeting with Joseph Smith, he did a post where he repeated the Book of Mormon seven times. And then seven days later, uh, also in September, he did another one. And in that case, he repeated the word conference. So starting with September and then going for seven months in a row, he would do one social media post himself. I'm not talking about the official church account or anything like that. His social media account once a month for seven months, he would do a post that would repeat a word or a phrase or name or titles of Christ seven times. And then it stopped. The last time he did it, uh, in that series anyway, was March, uh, which is the same month that the Kirtland Temple came back to the church. And then he didn't do it in April. So I thought he was done. Probably a lot of you thought that he was done. But then he picked back up with May. And then again in June. And this is the post that we're talking about in this article. That was his last post. Uh, he didn't do one for July. And so far, he hasn't done one for August. Now, I don't know what that means or, or why. Um, I looked at all of his uh, social media posts uh, throughout the entirety of his account uh, since he became president of the church. And there have been months that he's skipped. In fact, there's been times where he's gone two months without posting, so it's not necessarily unusual. But I would have thought that maybe he'd be doing the same thing where he'd be doing seven months in a row. So don't know what that means. We'll just have to wait and see. But on June 1st, President Nelson invited people to, comm to commemorate his 100th birthday by reaching out to the one in need, just as the Savior did, referring to his teachings in the parable of the lost sheep. In the parable, the Savior encouraged his followers to reach out to others 
in need uh, the way a caring shepherd would do for his sheep, looking beyond the 99 to reach the one lost from the flock. President Nelson encouraged people to share their experiences on social media using hashtag 99 plus one. All right. And then uh, the article mentions President Down H. Oaks post on June 3rd. So let's take a look at that. And in this post, you know, he does the 99 plus one. And um, he points out that both him and President Nelson have reached their 40 year mark since they were called as apostles, uh, which is so interesting to me because uh, President Nelson also brought that up in his general conference talk. It was the first thing that he brought up, in fact. My dear brothers and sisters, today is an, is an historic day for President Down H. Oaks and me. It was 40 years ago on April 7th, 18, or 1984, when we were sustained to the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. And then President Oaks says, This year marks 40 years since President Russell M. Nelson and I were both called, sustained, and set apart as apostles in the Quorum of the Twelve. So... That's th- that fascinates me. Um, we've talked about this before. Let's remember what uh, 40 seems to signify. I've talked to Rabbi Gerfine about this in Judaism. They view the number 40 as a time of preparation, incubation, uh, things like that. Uh, let me just show you what I have really quick. So first, uh, and by the way, this is my quotes numbers spreadsheet. So first, uh, I, what I have on here is the 40 days and 40 nights of the flood. So it rained uh, the flood of Noah. The rains which caused the flood lasted 40 days and 40 nights. Then the wicked were destroyed by the flood, which lasted 150 days. And this is kind of a theme with 40. You have 40 days, years, whatever, and then after that's completed, then comes destruction or, or something else. Uh, the next one is Moses was on Mount Sinai 40 days and 40 nights, both times that he received the tablets with the Ten Commandments. After the 40 days, the gold calf was destroyed and 3,000 put to death. So again, you have like a destruction of the wicked after 40 All right, and then the next one, 40 years. Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years after leaving Egypt. They possessed the promised land after the 40 years had been completed. And I'll remind you, and I I really think that the story of Jericho is a foreshadowing of the second coming, because that's the first time in Scripture that you see seven trumpets. And you have this thing where they, they march around the city of Jericho, which I think represents the world if I'm right about this foreshadowing and um, you know, they go around six times just like we've had these 6,000 years. And then the seventh at the beginning of the seventh day, that's when the walls fall and they fall because of the trumpets. And then Israel takes the city and and everybody is killed um, except for Rahab and her family. And then Israel went on to uh, take over the rest of the land Uh, destroying cities and people as they went because they were wicked. And the Book of Mormon talks about that fact that if those people had been righteous, then the Lord wouldn't, would not have had Israel destroy them, but they were. So here's another thing, 40 years go by and then, then comes the destruction of the wicked. Okay. And then here's another one, 40 days. Christ fasted for 40 days when he was with God in the desert after the 40-day fast, Christ is tempted by Satan, then Satan is cast out. And then Christ begins his mortal ministry, which, of course, uh, the culmination of that was uh, him overcoming death and sin and conquering, uh, conquering those things. Okay. The next one, uh, Christ spent 40 days with his disciples after his resurrection. Then he ascended to heaven. And then we also have the Salt Lake Temple was completed after 40 years. Then the Angels of Destruction were released. Um, I'm not going to get into that really, but I have the quotes right here. You can access my spreadsheets anytime. Uh, the link for it, for them is in the description box below. 
but at the dedication of the Salt Lake Temple, the um, the angels that are mentioned in oh, I don't have the scripture here, but oh, I have it right here. the The four angels uh, referred to in Revelation chapter seven verses one through four were released at the dedication of the Salt Lake Temple. So forty years constructing the temple, and then the angels of destruction are released. Uh, forty months is typically how long a human uh, pregnancy lasts, right? So you have this pregnancy, 40 weeks, and then the baby is born. And that's another symbol of the second coming. And now we have uh, Presidents Nelson and Oaks uh, who have reached their 40 years, and they're both pointing that out. And it's it's interesting to note that uh, President Hinckley, when they first came in, he said... We have enjoyed we have enjoyed a conference that has been remarkable, I think, in a number of ways. The naming of two men to the Council of the Twelve on one occasion is something that has not happen, happened in a long while. The last time it happened was 40 years ago when President Kimball and President Benson were so named. So I'm not taking this lightly that they're both pointing, you know, like, emphasizing that they just reached their 40-year anniversary, especially with the type of um, the, the type of general authorities they are, the, the type of apostles they are. President Nelson talking so much about the second coming, him being the heart surgeon, preparing the heart of the church to become a Zion people of one heart and one mind, and then President Oaks being the judge. I'm, I'm not taking that lightly. I really am not. So when these two reach their 40 years or when President Nelson reaches his 100th birthday, I am taking note. Uh, when it comes to things, spiritual things, things having to do with the church, just like President or just like Elder Benar said, there are no coincidences. There's not. And there's more I could say, but I'm not going to get into all that right now. Okay. And then, so you made the article points to uh, President Holland's June 5th post. So let's take a look at that. And, oh, it's uh, President Nelson and President Holland, at the time Elder Holland, uh, in Jerusalem with the Temple Mount in the background and them at the BYU Jerusalem Center. Um, And then he also makes mention of the fact, he says, in the more than 40 years I have known him, I cannot think of a time that he was unkind, abrupt, rude, or insensitive. It just isn't in his nature. You guys, President Holland is another one that I'm closely watching. I'm thinking about the two witnesses. Sorry, this is just this is my opinion on it. I know other people have very literal, very different ideas of the two witnesses, but this is how I feel. And I think it's really interesting that he chooses this picture. I'm sure he has other pictures with President Nelson, but he chose this one. And I was talking to Jenica over the weekend about President Holland. And I was like, you know what? He, so he was the president of BYU when uh, the BYU Jerusalem Center was constructed. He was instrumental in getting the, the BYU Jerusalem Center to become a reality. And as you know, I think that it will become a temple in the future because we already have many examples of temples where the building was originally built for some other purpose, like a tabernacle, a chapel, an office building, but then later they were converted into temples. And we also know that there are different types of temples. We have the Kirtland Temple that's not the typical temple that we have right now in the church. There's also the 24 Temple Complex that's supposed to be constructed in their multi-purpose buildings. So I think that this building could become like a headquarters, uh, like kind of like the church administration building, something like that, like turn into a temple where it's like Christ's throne is there. He, He rules from the BYU Jerusalem Center, something like that. But anyway, it was President Holland who was the president of BYU when this was constructed. It was President Holland that met with Benjamin Netanyahu in 2016, along with uh, President Cook, or I mean Elder Cook. (laughs) We haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, Elder Cook. 
And then it's President Holland that went with President Nelson during his world ministry tour um, in 2018, just shortly after he became president of the church. And the first place that he wanted to go was Jerusalem, and President Holland went with him. So President Holland, he really, if there was one person that, that I, f- I feel would qualify as one of the two witnesses, it'd be him. BYU Jerusalem Center, the only one aside from Elder Cook that's met with Benjamin Netanyahu or any Israeli prime minister that I know of. And then he went with President Nelson on his world ministry ministry tour and they started um, in Jerusalem. And uh, he doesn't have much time left, according to him. In his talk, in general conference, he said, you know, I may only have weeks left or possibly months, but he didn't say years. Okay. And uh, what's really interesting in that light is his post from just 18 hours ago. Okay, you guys. Okay, so we have President Nelson, whose health is declining. We have President Oaks, who who looks well, but um, he is also very old. He's in his 90s. We have President Eyring. Uh, his health is declining. He has needed assistance uh, in recent general conferences. And then we have President Holland. So we have four who are pretty close to, to death. Okay. Uh, President Holland posted this 18 hours ago. This week I had the opportunity to visit by telephone with Olympian Kenneth Rooks, whose inspired steeplechase performance in Paris won him a medal and captured the admiration of millions of people around the world. I congratulate him and all the athletes who remind us of what is possible when we give our all to to something. Kenneth, like so many members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, does extraordinary things in life, both in and out of the spotlight. My my mind turns to races. Okay, pay attention to this part. My mind turns to races, quote-unquote, that all of us run. Those daily ch- challenges and experiences that help us grow as children of God as we strive to be more like his son, Jesus Christ. It may not feel as if it comes with a medal or trophy, but we know that the prize is real. It is what Christ conveyed at the conclusion of the crucifixion when he said, It is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. So, President Holland is talking about an end of life, in this case, the Savior with the crucifixion. It is finished. And, you know, he posts this picture. Jenica was like, this, that's a really interesting combination of photos because you have this guy that's like looking up in the sky. And then they chose like a stock photo of this racetrack with uh, this like bright, uh, like the sun in the sky, but it's like sunset. And, uh, you know, it could look something like the second coming whenever it happens, when, when Christ descends, uh, from the heavens. But, um, it is finished into thy, into thy hands. I commend my spirit. You know, he had a near death experience. It seems like he, he was supposed to die. Like ordinarily he would have died, but it seems like his life was prolonged. Uh, President Holland, and uh, he came back with a message of uh, admonition and urgency, and that we need to be recognized as Christ, or he needs to recognize us when he comes again at the second coming. So, I don't know. We, We will just have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, it's interesting to note as well, by the way, just another tangent here, when it comes to Israel in the Olympics, uh, this is Times of Israel, brushing off threats and boos, Israel's seven medals mark its best ever Olympic showing. Israel's best ever Olympic showing with this horrible Olympics that we had with all the controversies 
uh, with the athletes and then especially with the opening ceremonies. It's this Olympics that they came away with seven medals. As we're in this um, unprecedented war that they're in right now, as we wait for this attack from Iran, they came away with seven medals. That's a really interesting number. That is very, very interesting. And if there was ever like something to really provoke the Lord, I think, like just in general, worldwide, there's been an increase in wickedness, right? Um, and as that increases, it starts to affect more and more things that before were not wicked or were wholesome, like the opening ceremony of the Olympics. And so I could see the opening ceremonies mocking the uh, the Savior and his apostles and uh, the institution of the sacrament. I could see that, you know, on the world stage, whereas the, the, the opening ceremonies have never really been controversial. But this year, with all this stuff going on, it is. I could see that being like the last slap in the face before it's like, okay, you have the world has officially gotten to this this level of wickedness. Um, now you're gonna see what happens. Now you're gonna see. This is it. It's finally reached a tipping point on a worldwide stage. There aren't very many like worldwide events like the Olympics where so many people tune in. And that's how it started. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if judgment comes next. Okay, continuing after that, um, it points out an August 9th letter from President Holland. Um, let me zoom in to general authorities, general officers, area 70s, mission, stake, and district presidencies, bishoprics, and branch presidencies, members of stake and ward councils, including counselors and secretaries, President Nelson's 100th birthday celebration. Dear brothers and sisters, all are invited to watch a worldwide broadcast celebrating the 100th birthday of our beloved prophet, President Russell M. Nelson, on Monday, September 9th, 2024, at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Broadcast details can be found at newsroom.churchofjesuschrist.org. This 75-minute program will include testimonies, music, and tributes uh, celebrating his remarkable life and ministry. Okay, and then I'll just cut it off right there. And then if we go back to this article, it adds some additional information. It says, the 75-minute broad broadcast on September 9th will celebrate the life and teachings. So that's one thing that wasn't in President Holland's letter. It's going to have um, some of his teachings in there, in there of this Latter-day prophet whose life and ministry continually exempl exemplify God's love for each of his children. Examples of what people around the world have done over the past 100 days to commemorate his birthday will be shared through stories from people uh, who were the one. Um, oh yeah. And that's the thing. His, uh, pr president Nelson's, um, post in, in, uh, June, June 2nd was 100 days from his 100th birthday. He's really calling a lot of attention to it. You guys, he's calling a lot of attention to his birthday. Uh, so much so that I have a spreadsheet that tracks that called president Nelson or sorry, prophets, President Nelson's age. I have at least 11 times that he's called attention uh, to his age, and especially his ordinal age, which means he's 99 years old right now, and he's progressing through his 100th year of life, which will be completed on his 100th birthday. So he keeps pointing to his ordinal age. And um, again, I don't know why I still... I still think that um, it has to do with the second coming and the fact that in the millennium, when you reach 100 years, whether I don't know if that means ordinal or cardinal, but once you reach 100 years, uh, that's when you go from mortality to resurrection in the, in the twinkling of an eye. He may be the first one that that happens to. I don't know. Uh, there's some other things to consider, though. 
let's go back to my spreadsheet called quotes numbers and uh, let's talk about some of these other ages or numbers okay first 99 okay i only have one for 99 but it takes us to um a very important prophet abraham abraham was 99 years old when the abrahamic covenant was made one, you have the Abrahamic covenant. Two, Abraham's name was changed from Abram to Abraham. Three, God reveals Isaac will be born. So we all know that Isaac is a symbol of Christ. It's like Abraham is like God the Father, and he's asked to sacrifice his son, which Abraham did not have to do that, but Heavenly Father did do that for us with, with Christ. And so that happened when Abraham was 99 years old, just like President Nelson right now. And then uh, Abraham was circumcised at the age of 99. And then when Abraham was 100 years old, Isaac was born. So maybe that's what it's going to be. Maybe when President Nelson is 100 years old or when he's in his 100th year or something like that. Maybe that's when the second coming is going to happen. When Christ comes, whatever, to Adam and uh, to the new Jerusalem, to the Jews, the final appearance, whatever. Um, and then we have a few other things for 100. Uh, the length of the tabernacle as Israel was wandering in the wilderness was 100 cubits. So it's definitely just like 10. It's probably uh, Rabbi Gerfein was going to talk to me. <coughs> sorry. Rabbi Gerfein was going to talk to me about it, about the significance of a hundred. Um, but we never got to that, but I assume that it's, it's like mega completion because a hundred is 10 times 10. So anyway, a hundred pieces of silver Jacob or Israel purchased land in Shechem for a hundred pieces of silver. Later, Joseph's body was brought for, was brought up from Egypt and buried here. Um, and then, and then you have hundred um, as an age during the millennium. People will be changed in the twinkling of an eye from mortality to immortality at one hundred years of age. And I guess I better just read this really quick. There's there's usually somebody, uh, I think usually new people that. Uh, may not be familiar with this. So you go to Isaiah 65, 20 through 22. Uh, this is talking about the millennium. There shall be no more hence or thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die in hundred years old. Okay. And then that's repeated in Doctrine and Covenants 101. And then Joseph Fielding Smith confirms it and Bruce R. McConkie. So I feel like it, it maybe has something to do with that. I, I don't know. If he, if he does pass away, then uh, what we're left with is President Oaks, the judge. Maybe it's something like this. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe President Nelson will make it to 100 years. Maybe he'll, he'll be changed before his 100th birthday, or maybe it'll be after. And then... He leaves, okay, so not because he dies the way that we die now, but because his his probation is now over, and it then it transfers to President Oaks, and then he becomes president of the church. He's the judge, and maybe maybe it's, you know, he's supposed to be the judge at the beginning of the millennium because we know that there's supposed to be a, a type of judgment that takes place uh, of the righteous by the 12 apostles, and then for the Nephites, and I guess probably for all of Lehi's descendants, you have the 12 disciples of the Book of Mormon, which I, th I guess in like similar manner, they're supposed to judge their people. So maybe it'd be fitting for President Oaks to be the first. Uh, I don't know how things are going to be structured in the millennium, but I'm assuming that Christ would still have uh, his apostles in mortality. And so... Uh, President Oaks would be the senior apostle and, you know, maybe that's fitting because he would help, he would help establish the political kingdom of God 
on the earth, um, as well as help with like judgment, you know, whatever, whatever that entails. So you, you see what I mean? Just everything is so perfect. It's so perfect. These numbers are just crazy. And I don't think that you can doubt that President Nelson is pointing to these numbers. He, he's pointing to seven. He's pointing to 40. He's pointing to 99. He's pointing to 100. Why? I don't know. But this this is my guess. This is my guess. Um, and then, so, you know, we didn't see anything from President Nelson in uh, July and nothing, nothing yet in August, which it's fine. Who knows? But it's interesting that on August 1st, both President Oaks and President Eyring, they posted, um, about President Nelson. Now, the reason why is because you have this new, uh, manual or book that came out teachings of presidents of the church, Russell M. Nelson. And so they were posting about that. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know, but it, it, it's, it's interesting because it's like, well, let's just read what he says. So he says, I've known president Russell M. Nelson, my dear friend for many years in that time, he has endured difficulties of varying degrees. Uh, yet he has provided a remarkable example of how, uh, how understanding the atonement of Jesus Christ can bring us heavenly relief in our trials. And then he quotes President Nelson, and uh, what he quotes is, let me just find it really quick. It's on this one. Uh, He quotes a quote from President Nelson where he repeats something seven times. In this case, it's references to the Savior. Okay, it's a quote from President Nelson, seven references to the Savior, which I have highlighted in these uh, colors right here. And then on the same day, uh, President Eyring does the same thing. Uh, He quotes this quote where President Nelson repeats the word faith seven times. So they both did it on the same day. I know there's people that want to dismiss this, but you can't. There, there was someone that was like, well, not everything that uh, is seven is prophetic. I, I know. <laughs> I know that. But do you think it's normal that you would have all these sevens in this order? You have like these two double sevens in September. And then for seven months in a row, President Nelson does a seven every single month. And then he stops. And then he starts up again. And then on August 1st, you think it's normal that presidents Oaks and Iring would would both quote one of his sevens. Like, come on, come on, come on with it, come on. Yeah, sevens have been used all throughout all of hum, you know human history. Yes, but when they come in patterns and at significant times like this, it's beyond coincidence. When Israel, of all years, in all times. They get seven medals at the Olympics as they're as they're in this existential war, a war that could become or maybe is uh, the final war. Come on with it. Okay, so then the last thing, this is from uh, Caitlin with Anticipating Christ's Return. Make sure to subscribe to her. She does a lot of second coming content. Uh, She sent me a text that says, Elder Anderson just posted a line I thought was interesting about facing facing the future with faith. Especially after listening to your video from this morning. He also said uh, that as we focus our lives on Christ and the covenants of the temple, we will see ourselves for who we are and who we can become. There was also a hint, a hint at not being of the world which always sounds millennial to me. Uh, And yeah, it is. Um, I've done a video about that before. The idea of like overcoming the world, um, not being of the world. Yeah, it it is a reference to uh, the second coming. But let's read this post. And, And look at the picture that he chooses for this. He chooses the Rome, Italy temple, which President Nelson said was a hinge point in the history of the church. 
So just look at these, like, look at what they're choosing for their posts. You have uh, President Holland and President Nelson in Jerusalem with the Temple Mount in the background and them at the BYU Jerusalem Center. You have uh, this thing with, like, the end of the race. You know, we've reached the end. Oh, my gosh. Um, it is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. And then we have this. Uh, at the time that I'm making this, just a couple hours ago. Actually, I don't think this is updated, so probably like three hours ago or something like that. 8.58 a.m. Uh, Central Time. The gospel of Jesus Christ gives us insight into who we truly are, why we are here on earth, how to continue along the covenant path, and where we can be for all eternity. We are sons and daughters of God here on earth to grow our faith in our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, to learn by our experiences, to follow them and choose good over evil, striving to one day, uh, striving to one day to return to live with them. Knowing this, we are not afraid to be different. Jesus said of his disciples, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. From John 17, 16. Let us look to the future with faith and hope. I promise that as you center your life in your faith in Jesus Christ and in his ordinances, covenants, and teachings of his holy house, you will see yourself for who you really are and who you can become. So I, I'm just getting a feeling, you guys, uh, based on what we've covered here, in addition to other things that I can't share, I really feel like I, I, I really... I. I really feel like things are about to change. I really, really do. Um, of course, we'll just have to wait and see. But there are just like such interesting, interesting things going on right now. Such interesting messaging uh, from church leaders. And uh, we're seeing things that we haven't seen before. And uh, it's exciting. So, all right, well that's going to be it for this one. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also make sure to share it and I'll talk to you guys later.